As far as I know, it hasn't run for 13 years. Yeah, we're looking pretty, pretty nasty on the points. Got a whole box full of bearings and seals. We've got a complete steering clutch. And we're actually going to check the rolling drag with a scale. So here we go. Let's see if we can fix it. Fixed. Max is telling me that there's mice in the track frames and he's never wrong so we better make sure we put out some traps tonight. Alright folks, gotta get back to work on this little Oliver OC46 crawler. I didn't have time to work on it, it sat outside for several months. Then I was worried that the track pads were frozen down. We got a break in the weather and I brought it inside but then it's been sitting here for over six weeks so it's long overdue. Need to get it finished and get it out of here. Let's start with the pumps. This is the fuel pump. It's mechanical. Bolts to the side of the engine. Runs off of a lobe on the camshaft. It's in pretty sad shape. It's got a lot of corrosion inside. Probably had water in it. This diaphragm right here is bad. And there's two poppet valves, check valves. They're both bad. See the little rubber actually popped out of this one. So in order to fix this, we need a complete rebuild kit, diaphragm, valves, seals, etc. Costs over a hundred bucks for that. But talking to the owner, he wants to just put that aside and use one of these electric fuel pumps. So that's what we're gonna do. Also got a little fuel filter for it. 
and it has a small strainer that comes with the pump. So that should work just fine. There's a fuse holder for it. The problem, well the danger with these mechanical fuel pumps is that the diaphragm goes bad and then it starts to leak gas or diesel fuel right into the crankcase because this is open to the inside of the engine. And if you let that happen long enough, it dilutes the oil and then bad things happen. I had a Perkins engine, a 4108 out of a Bobcat that threw a rod because of that. Next up is the hydraulic pump. This is a commercial brand gear pump. I'm positive that it's not original to the machine. Somebody made this bracket to adapt it. It's just been torch cut out of some plate and then they've ground the heads of the bolts off for clearance. Whatever pump they had originally would have just bolted directly to the front of the machine without this bracket. I think it works. At least I would be surprised if it doesn't work. But the owner told me that it's, it was just covered in grease when he took it out of the machine. So I'm sure it's been leaking. Probably from the input shaft seal, that would be my guess anyway. I called Baum Hydraulics. This pump's old as the hills, but commercial supposedly still supports them. I, I ordered an input shaft seal. This is what they sent me. It's just a single lip seal. Anyway, when I took the, the input shaft out, what I found is it just has two O-rings. There is no lip seal. So, taking a few measurements, I believe they're just standard dash 216 O-rings, regular Buna N O-rings. And I have those, so I'm gonna go ahead and put them in. The shaft has a little bit of wear on the, the sealing surface here, but it's not terrible. I think we'll be all right. So I think the way that this works is the first seal here is a pressure seal. Then there's a cavity that's open to the inlet side of the pump, the low pressure side of the pump. And then the second O-ring is what keeps it from leaking outside. So the oil down here is at full pump pressure, whatever this one is, 1500 PSI or something. And then if it leaks past this first seal, it goes into this cavity and it basically gets sucked up by the suction side of the pump. This is relatively low pressure, or basically zero pressure. And then this seal right here, seals that low pressure fluid from leaking externally. Got some wear on our key. Maybe I'll flip that around. There's a support bearing out here. It's just a sealed ball bearing. It's in good shape, no play really. But I figured I better pop the seal out and put a little bit of grease in it. this shield that goes over that. I don't know, this thing seems kind of, seems kind of funky, but it's what was in there. I'm sure it's the right thing. This is the drive shaft for the hydraulic pump. Slips on here like so. But I found a problem. That U joint's good. But this one, not good. It's missing the snap ring. So, so that's a problem. There's gonna be a day, hopefully far in the future, where I'll be upset that my dad is a hoarder. But not today. Today he's a hero. I actually had two clips missing. I have no idea why, but that's a big problem. These are actually the wrong clips. These are for the style that the clip on the inside, but it's the best I could do. I think they'll be just fine. Certainly better than this method. 
stay. The customer made this little plate here that replaces the old mechanical fuel pump and it also gives us a place to mount the new electric fuel pump. I'm working on the plumbing now. It had flared copper tubing that ran from the fuel pump to the carburetor. So I chopped one end off and kind of rebent it. And it's going to fit in here like so. And then I used the first stage of my inverted flaring tool to just put a little barb on here. Put a piece of 5 16 hose on it. And it should couple up just fine to that barb on the end of the pump. Fuel tank's going in. It's got the appropriate flare fitting. I made some pads out of some old inner tube. All right, folks, we're making some progress. I've got the fuel tank installed. The old straps are pretty shabby. That's the good one. There's the bad one. So I cut out some new straps out of some sheet steel, welded some studs to them, painted those up, got that installed. And then I've put the seat slash battery box deal on top. Looks pretty good. Well, the battery is going to go in this compartment here. I've also got a shifter fabbed up for the forward reverse box. So this is the normal gear shifter here. Four gears and a reverse. This little guy is just forward and reverse. I may have to cut it down a little bit. It's pretty close to the, the firewall here. I was working off of dimensions from another another tractor and honestly I'm not sure how it even worked on that tractor but yeah there's the reverser so I fabbed up all these brackets and pins and all that jazz it's it's good to go in my opinion and you saw the pump I think before and then it comes with this little strainer I added an inline filter again with just flexible hose and then we go to a copper hard line that runs back underneath the tank and there's also a shutoff valve there so I think that'll work just fine there should be a side panel here that'll protect this filter keep that from getting damaged yeah it's wired in with the key switch got an inline fuse holder there I guess we're ready to install the loader at least I can't think of a real good reason why we couldn't do that. We cleaned out and tapped out the holes there that the loader mounts onto. I've got new bolts. Let's give it a try, see what it looks like.
Motor is installed, bolted up, ready to go. But it was not without some casualties. I bent the tensioner bracket here for the alternator and broke that Molex connector off the side of the voltage regulator. Got to fix that. And then I bent the dash instrument panel deal here pretty bad so I'm gonna have to also straighten that may have to wait for the hood the hood to be painted to get that figured out yeah I should have taken this big whatever it is return line off it just hit everything on the way in plus I'm trying to work by myself and that never goes well anyway progress Yeah, I just don't like these things. They're like the scotch lock of battery terminals. Let's crimp, let's crimp a real eye on this thing and just be done with it. Well, believe it or not, I actually have a quarter inch hole, two aught, flared starter lug in stock. Much better. All right, folks, I think that'll work. This two watt positive battery cable may be slightly overkill for starting a 30 horsepower three cylinder gas engine, but I guess better overkill than underkill, am I right? Anyway, there's our disconnect switch on the negative cable. Don't know if you're supposed to put it on the negative or the positive. Can't see where it really makes any difference. I think it'll work just fine. Take a quick walk through the plumbing before I get all the hoses installed. We got four hard lines, two for the bucket cylinders, two for the boom cylinders. The boom cylinders pretty straightforward. Got two half inch hoses coming into a T, four three-eighths hoses going out to the two boom cylinders. 
On the bucket cylinders, it's a little more complicated. You got half inch hose coming in, three eighths hose coming out, but you got an extra three eighths hose here coming off to the side. That's for a separate relief valve for the bucket cylinders. So the valve block here has a relief valve built in that sets the system pressure. But on the back side of the hydraulic tank, hiding down here is another relief valve. And if I understand it correctly, it has to do with the geometry of the, the bucket. So if you, can't remember how it works. If you curl the bucket all the way down and then raise the boom all the way up, because it has this equalizing linkage here, the cylinder can actually bind up. So you get into a situation where the bucket hits the hard stops and it's trying to compress the cylinder here as you raise the boom. So it has to have its own relief valve to, to prevent that from destroying itself. Check it out, I found a life hack for those of us who are funnel phobic and pouring challenged. Ah! Total fail. Well, I managed to spill some fuel into the tank. I think we should be able to try this. Oh yeah. It's working. All right, folks, place your bets. Here's my prediction. I'm saying there's a 100% chance that we will have some kind of a leak. I've already gone ahead and pre-spilled some fluid, so hopefully the machine doesn't feel like it has to compensate by spilling any more. 90% chance that I have at least one hose backwards, 50% chance that I have all the hoses backwards, 20% chance that when we start it up, it just does nothing, 5% chance that it works correctly, and of course, a 0% chance that it has no leaks. Let's give it a shot. I started to relay a little tappy tap. It should work now. Alright, take three. The lever for the loader was stuck in the down position. Well, that went better than expected. It works, the pump works, the hydraulic functions work, and I even got it plumbed correctly. So these are the hoses I was worried about getting backwards, and they are, in fact, correct. The bad news is, it's just pouring oil out of this center spool on the valve body. And the customer told me not to use the center spool because it was it was in pretty rough shape. I think it was frozen in the valve body and he had to do some do some things to get it freed up and I believe the spool is cracked. I don't know if you guys will be able to see it but it's got a hairline crack there and then it's also cracked right here at the at the bottom of that chamfer. So that is no good. There's, th these spools are hollow. There's springs and check balls and stuff inside here. So there's oil actually inside the spool. All right, folks, the spool is out. That was a challenge in and of itself. And you can see how badly it's cracked. 
Well, the crack runs up to about here. And this ear on the end is actually a separate piece that threads in. So we're just dealing with one crack lengthwise through the spool. Now these spools are they're hard as a coffin nail and then they get lapped to size and it's not surprising I guess that it cracked being so hard. But the problem is once it's cracked it expands out and then it won't slide through the the valve body. I had to beat the thing out. Anyway I've got kind of a jury rigged plan. I don't know how well it's going to work but I figure it's worth trying. So I grabbed a shaft collar for a three-quarter diameter shaft. The end of this spool is three-quarters diameter. So I think we're going to put it back in and then we'll install the shaft collar with the set screw opposite the crack and then we'll use the set screw to hopefully help close up that crack. And then we can tighten down the ear maybe with a new o-ring and just see if we can get it to, to stop pouring oil out the end of the valve block. We're never going to be able to use this spool anyway because it's so badly corroded. See there's a whole section of it right here that's just it's just gone. We can't leave it out like we can't just plug the end and leave the spool out because the the pressure passage in the valve body will just bypass right into the return so even if we can't use it I think we can use it kind of as a plug. It should work well enough anyway so that's the best I've got right now that the only other thing we can do is replace the valve body. Well, I guess we'll file that under the category of temporary unless it works. I'll be shocked if it does. Speaking of shocked, it's actually the following day. I left the bucket up last night and I don't think it's moved a millimeter. So either these cylinders are, the gland seals are tight and the spools and the valve are tight and everything's good we don't have any leaks or these joints are so stiff and rusty that the thing just couldn't come down even if it wanted to either way let's fire it up and see what happens let's give her a little choke got a problem here on the left side tilt cylinder. The chrome is gone. Got some pretty deep pitting in that rod. And the, the boom cylinders also got some issues. The chrome's all wrinkled up. So those are probably going to leak. And unfortunately there's no there's no easy fix. I don't know if they could be re-chromed probably be easier just to make new rods for them. Now these cylinders all have the Chevron V packing kind of like that backhoe we worked on. They're pretty tolerant of you know blemishes in the rod so he might get away with it for quite a while. For no more than he uses it it might be fine. I'm saying it's good enough to start buttoning things up. I want to install the belly pan. It goes up underneath of the engine oil pan. But some jack wagon decided that the best possible fastener to install that thing with is a fine thread 7 16 bolt which of course I didn't have so ran to town and got a couple of those and then we need to install the floor plates and something to hold those two hard lines that run across for the bucket cylinders and we also need eventually to figure out some kind of a support for the drawbar it's supposed to have a hoop that runs underneath of it so we'll have to fabricate something for that. 
All right, folks, you may want to brace yourselves before I hit you with this shocking revelation. I found a few problems. We'll let that sink in for a minute. First ones are pretty minor. This bracket that I made for the reversing lever, it was hitting the floor pan when I tried to install it, so I had to cut the, cut the corner out of that triangular brace. No big deal, just use the old OSHA wheel here. And then, same thing on the lever. I ended up having to shorten this because it was too close to the firewall in the forward position. The bigger problem has to do with this belly pan. So, underneath of the machine, way up under the belly there's a pair of steel hard lines that connect the two boom cylinders to each other and I put them together like they were the parts that came with the machine but they're way too long they're supposed to be like I think six inches long and they're at least twice that anyway they they're too wide to fit inside the belly pan so there's no choice we've got to crack those lines loose take that whole the whole boom cylinder hose system out of the machine and redo it let's go ahead and stick this pig and see how much oil we can spill it's kind of weird this boom the boom lever or the boom spool doesn't have a spring it just has a detent and there's actually a float position so that's up, that's neutral, that's down, and that's float. But it doesn't return to center. You have to actually pull it back to neutral. I've never seen another... I've never seen a loader set up quite like that before. Show you guys a little trick I learned from J.C. Smith over at J.C. Smith Projects. These are the caps off of one quart bottles of gear lube. They work fantastically as plugs for brake lines, hydraulic lines, anything you can think of that's this size or smaller. Well, it's going to suck if that still doesn't work, but I guess there's only one way to find out. Well, I think it looks pretty civilized. I even found what I think is the original bracket for those hard lines. Yeah, I believe it'll work. It's just got to have room for the belly pan to fit up on both sides of those lines. It's going to be tight with that suction line, but we should be able to make it work. Okay. I'm out of breath. The belly pan is in. It's kind of a pain. Just like every track machine ever made. Alright guys, it's starting to come together. The floor pans are in. The reverse lever is in. Pretty happy with how that came out. I think it'll work just fine. Got plenty of room to get on. Oh yeah. I didn't think about those hard lines. I think it'll work. If we have to, we'll bend it a little bit. As far as the lines go, I think I've got that routed the best I can. So I had these clamps here that would have originally clamped around a steel hard line that was in the middle of or between two hoses. So we'll repurpose that just to hold the hoses. And then underneath of the instrument panel here, I made these brackets to hold the two hard lines. They're different than the ones that it would have originally had. They're they're kind of backwards of how it was. We got pictures off of a another machine but I, I couldn't make it work with the, the steel hard lines that I have so I'm pretty happy with how this came out I think it'll work just fine and I'm currently working on the hitch I'll tell you what that almost looks like somebody made it that knew what they were doing I don't know what kind of junkyard steel that is but it welded up beautifully 
the tiniest bit of an undercut there is a little too hot but it sure laid down nice anyway I think we'll hit it with a little bit of the P word bolt that up and we should be pretty well done with this project I think that'll work actually looks pretty decent I did go ahead and put some holes in here for some pins to keep this from moving side to side there's no holes in this part though I don't know if it'd be better to drill some holes and have a pin go all the way through the book only shows the holes in the bottom plate so yeah it needs the these pieces need to be straightened and then it's supposed to have a tongue that's what like an inch thick piece of steel that bolts through these two holes and then has a single hole here for your attachment but that's missing well, we'll see if we can straighten that maybe otherwise I'm sure he can figure that out I also got the alternator sorted out replace that pigtail for the voltage regulator it's a standard Delco part I actually had it on the shelf at my local store but it's super close from the hydraulic line on the inside of this cylinder to the alternator so we're gonna have to be real careful that we don't have some contact we may have to cut this tensioner bracket off and the last thing we need to do is figure out the exhaust this piece of schedule 40 pipe isn't really cutting it so what we're gonna do I got a piece of inch and three-quarter ID exhaust pipe here it's a little bit small so we're gonna use a stretcher this guy here a pipe stretcher we'll expand that out a little bit and then this piece will fit right inside inside of a new muffler. Well, I'd say that went better than expected. It's definitely hard to get used to this boom lever not having a spring return. 
it is very easy to leave that in the up position and install the machine out. That's what happened the first, the first crack at it. Also, this valve block seems to be leaking pretty badly from somewhere. Also, this is a small machine. That cockpit area is tiny. It's like flying a P-51 Mustang. But it works. Works better than I thought it would. It's got plenty of power to lift a full bucket of dirt. It'll dig. I mean, that's not packed or anything, but yeah, it works. Well, folks, if I'm being honest, that went way better than I expected. It works. It leaks, but it works. I think most of the leaks we expected. This cylinder gland seal is looking pretty bad. No surprise there. And then the valve block is still leaking pretty bad. I think it's all just from that center spool that's cracked. 
it just pours out of there once the oil warms up. So if anybody has an idea of how to fix that better without replacing that valve, let me know. Otherwise, I think we're we're looking at a new one or a better used one or, or something. The carburetor is going to have to come off and be cleaned. Must have picked up something in the fuel system. It runs okay wide open, but it won't won't hardly idle. So the low speed circuit must be jammed up. This machine is kind of weird to operate. I'm not sure Oliver really thought it through very well. Or maybe it's just their, their idea of how it should be. The clutch pedal is way too close to the, the seat platform here. You can't hardly get your foot on it. When I drive it, I have to leave my foot over here on this brace. And then the forward reverse lever is backwards. So you got to pull it back towards you to go forward push it forward to go in reverse and it's geared way too high so everything you saw me do was in first gear and even that's a little bit too fast the other three gears or whatever it has are basically worthless unless you're road traveling the machine but it's got plenty of power it'll lift a full bucket even without the counterweights and once it has the counterweights installed it should be pretty stable it really is a neat machine Especially when you think that it's almost 60 years old. And it's been built from two different machines and a lot of the parts aren't original. It's amazing that it works as well as it does. I'm happy with the work that we've done. The clutches seem fine. It'll spin the tracks before it'll slip the clutch. It'll kill it, kill the engine before it slips the clutch too. So that all seems to be just fine. I don't see any leaks in the drivetrain. As far as the loader and the hydraulics, you know, that's all the stuff that we we expected was going to be a problem. So I think that's where we're going to leave it, guys. I think this is the fifth or sixth video about this machine, so there probably won't be another another video about it unless there's a huge demand to see the replacement of that loader control valve. I'm going to probably rent some time on Deep Blue and tabulate the invoice, and then we're going to send this thing home and hopefully the owner's going to get some some use out of it. It's never going to be a new machine, but I think it's got a little bit of life left. And yeah, it should do the things that he wants it to do. So thanks everybody for watching. I know it's been a kind of a long haul on this machine. It's been almost a calendar year since I brought it home. Actually, it might be a little bit more than a year. So it's definitely time for it to go. I just, I should have never let it drag out this long. Anyway, I appreciate you watching. I'll see you next time. What did you get into? You silly puppy. No! No. Get her. Go get her, kiddo. No! Six feet away, you dirty kid. Child abuse. No, that was lots of fun. Got it on camera. <laughs> and, and what's this, from elder abuse?